ho my peeps. Um, I'm eating my dinner tonight uh, with you. I thought I would eat my dinner with you. Um, my dinner is an artichoke. Um, um, probably most of you know what artichokes are. You've probably eaten them yourself, but if you haven't, an artichoke is an unopened flower from a thistle plant. And artichokes um, are very good for you. Among other things, they contain um, compounds that help um, with your liver health. So they're, they're, they're excellent little things to eat. So I thought I would sit here and eat mine with you. What you do is you have to peel from around the bottom and the outside. You take each individual leaf and you pull it off. And it looks like this before you eat it. Then you can either eat it plain or dip it in something like butter, melted butter or mayonnaise, which is sort of the... Um, the standard is using mayonnaise. So I'm going to dip mine in a little mayonnaise. And then with your teeth, you scrape off the meat. On most of the meat of the artichoke, you're going to find down at the base of the leaf. But on the larger leaves that are around the bottom, you'll find that the meat actually goes up a little bit higher on the, on the leaf. So you end up scraping up higher. Um, if you've never eaten a fresh artichoke right out of the salty water, uh, you need to because artichokes have an amazing flavor. Um, well, they're kind of nutty, kind of sweet. Um, they sort of remind me of asparagus in a way, and they're just excellent. Now, what I will do is I will eat all the leaves around the bottom of this artichoke. I'll keep pulling them off and eating them. And then when I'm done, I'm going to have what's called the artichoke heart. The artichoke heart is full of a basically inedible, hairy sort of stuff, just like a, th a thistle has those hairs. Well, artichoke has that too. They're not very, it's not very pleasant to eat. So you need to take a spoon or something and you just scrape all that off and rinse off the artichoke heart. And then finally, at the very end, when you're all done working so hard to eat and clean and cook this artichoke, you finally get to the artichoke heart, which is indescribably good if you've never had one. I mean, we can get them pickled and stuff, but if you've never had a fresh, artichoke heart. It's a it's a taste that's hard to explain. It's wonderful. Um, as you guys know, I live in Central California and in the United States the artichoke capital, well basically of the world, is a three hour drive from here to a town uh, on the coast called Watsonville. Um, Watsonville uh, grows most of our um, most of the artichokes in in the world actually well in the United States a lot of them like if, if they come in a jar or something a lot of times they've come from like a South American country but we grow them here um, okay so as I'm eating these things it occurs to me that an artichoke is very much like the Wizard of Oz. You can't just take the artichoke and bite into it and hope to enjoy the experience. You have to start at the beginning. At the very first leaf on the very outside of this of this flower thing and you have to eat one leaf at a time. Just like Dorothy had to start at the very beginning of the Yellow Brick Road and she took one step at a time in a concentric circle, working her way outward until finally she was out of Munchkin land and she was on her way towards the Emerald City to solve her problem, which is basically where you're going with an artichoke. You're going to the, um, to the artichoke heart, which is analogous to the Emerald City. Now, how all of that is working in my life right now, I have a, a kid who is in college. 
this kid was a screw up when he was younger. Drugs, alcohol, just your typical 90s kid who got lost in the shuffle. Um, I was sort of a crappy parent. I wasn't standing on him all the time. I was off working and doing my own thing. And so he was kind of left to figure it all out on his own. Um, but luckily for him, the drugs was a minor deal. Easy to quit years ago. The alcohol st stayed with him. He's definitely alcoholic and he knows it. He's been through treatment, goes to AA when he needs to, <coughs> fully engaged and responsible in, his, in, in not drinking. He's been <coughs> um, sober for over two years, um, happily so. Um, but at um, 35 years old, he only recently decided that he needed to get through school through college so that he could work his way to some sort of a degree that was going to give him the type of career that he wanted. Now, both of my kids are, are smart. They're brilliant in their own ways. This particular kid <coughs> is brilliant um, in school. He's excellent in math. Um, he's interested in well, geology is the thing he's most interested in right now, but he he applies himself, spends a lot of time in the tutorial center, um, primarily tutoring other kids who aren't understanding the second semester of calculus that he's taking. <coughs> he's giving some thought to minoring in math, even though his major is geology. He's a gifted teacher. It's really too bad he doesn't want to teach because he he, he could make so many kids' lives so much easier when they get to math. Get rid of the fear of math for so many people. Um, I don't think he's going to end up teaching. I think he's going to end up in the um, geology industry. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't. I think it's the smoke. Honey, can you smell smoke? <coughs> what? Can you smell smoke? You don't smell it? I start to cough at night. Lots of new fires around us. So anyhow, it's tough for him because he's a lot older than a lot of the other kids in his classes because he's still at a junior college getting ready to transfer. And um, he has a lot of issues with these kids. It's, it's hard for him to like fit in because he's, you know, he's the gray-haired guy who's taking classes with these 18-year-olds, right? Mm. So he gets, and he's naturally kind of a high-strung person, carries a lot of anger. He's a big bruising guy, has worked as a bouncer. So I'm sure he's intimidating to a lot of his classmates. Anyway, and that causes for social issues. It causes social issues. So I was telling him, I said, look, you, now comes the most important part of your education, and that's the part where you learn how to get in where you fit in at school, and that's going to transfer over your work. You have to learn how to assess a situation with a group of people, Figure out who you need to be in that group in order to stay in control, not um, find yourself um, feeling attacked or, um, you know, shunned or frustrated. You have to learn how to stay in control. And a lot of that control is you just, you take one step and then the next. <coughs> in other words, <coughs> you get to know the guy who's sitting beside you. And maybe when you offer the hand of friendship more, you know, so to speak, you might get rebuffed at first, but you never know why. Maybe that kid, take a look at that kid. Is that kid a, covered in acne and kind of awkward looking? Maybe that kid has developed a chip on his shoulder. <coughs> then maybe it will take him a little bit longer to warm up to you. Don't get frustrated. The next day, say something else. <coughs> and the next day, something else. Until pretty soon, you've created a rapport with that kid. The camera just died. So um, I'm going to try doing it here on my um, my laptop. I've never used my laptop as a video capture device, so we'll see how this goes. Anyway, so the next day, 
you peel off another, I'm going to try to watch you guys instead of me. Um, and you peel off another little uh, bit of your artichoke and you say hi to the guy on the next side of you who might or might not be um, responsive. Um, maybe you have, you're having trouble with your lab partner like he has been. He's got this young female lab partner who's difficult. She's a difficult person. Um, and he's been attempting to try to figure out how to deal with her because um, it's just, it makes labs so, in, in chemistry, it makes his labs just so uncomfortable to be dealing with someone who he's got to be on his guard with and all that. But I told him, you don't know why she's that way. Maybe she was molested or raped by somebody who looked like you. Or maybe she, in her job, she is always dealing with men and, and, and men are either casually or by design making her feel less than. I mean, you do not know why people react the way they do. And sometimes you just have to take a little, a little step. You just peel off another little um, bit of the problem and you chew on it and you just keep going. Sometimes you put the artichoke down and you say, you know what? I've had enough of that nonsense. I'm not, I've, I've done all the artichoke eating I'm willing to do regarding this problem. Um, that's okay. There are, there are times when that's appropriate. Unfortunately, in your chemistry lab, that's not appropriate. You can't ignore it. I have artichoke in my teeth. It's going to keep being a problem. So you have to keep peeling away at that problem. Little bit by little bit. Um, eventually, you'll get down to this part in your artichoke where there's not a lot of meat left on these little um, fl uh, flower petal things. And they become very um, oh, fibrous and kind of difficult to mess with. And so you decide, well, it's time to take a step forward. So you pull out these little bits that have this hairy stuff that's in there that's basically not edible. It would poke your skin. And you end up with a basic artichoke heart. But you're not done yet. Inside the artichoke heart is all this inedible fibrous hair stuff. So even though you think you're done, you think you're there, I ought to tell you, you're not there yet. You have to peel either with a spoon or just pulling it out a little bit at a time. You have to peel all this hair stuff out of here too. And problems are a lot like that. You know, you may think that you've made progress or finished something up, but you find that, oh no, I, I, my problem has not been completely solved. There's stuff that I missed along the way that now I have to deal with. And that hairy problem for my son is his English class. My son had never really went to high school. He got kicked out of high school in his freshman year for some stupid thing. They sent him to a, the continuation high school where he really didn't do much of anything at all. Again, this is all my fault. Um, I could have fixed this if I'd had half a brain, if I'd had some experience, if I was a better parent. I didn't. So finally, he takes a GED and he gets out of high school and he went directly into junior college because he wanted to be a musician. So he was a music major forever, pulling out those hairs. Um, he's never in his life taken an English composition class. I mean, outside of, uh, of elementary school. Um, no high school English, no college English. Yet, he's got many, 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 many units under his belt. All of them required papers. All of his papers he got good grades on. So now he's in English 1A. English 1A should be a snap, right? Well, it's not. 
in, in, he's struggling with it. And the reason is because in English 1A, you have to write according to a system that you learn. You can't, you can't go outside of that system. You have to write exactly to what the teacher is asking you to do. So this style that he's developed along the way, all of these hairs that used to be in here, is inappropriate for his English class. And he's, he's you know, getting a B and he should be getting an A and he's getting a B. So I told him, listen, you, you thought you were at the end, right? You're ace in calculus and doing great in chemistry. You have a bright future. You thought you had you had gotten to the the yellow the 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 land of Oz in your education, and what did you run into? This thistle full of hairs that you cannot digest. Now you can just bite through the hairs and eat your artichoke heart and accept your B or C grade, or you can sit down with your instructor and tell him, look, dude, I'm, I was a GED student, never took an English class in my life, did well in all these other classes because they weren't asking me to write the way you are. I'm not exactly sure what you want. Help me here. Show me what you need. Give me the secret sauce about what I have to do so that I can ace this class. I want to learn. I need to know. I said, that's what you do. You sit down with your professor and you tell him, tell him it. Tell it to him just like that. Chances are pretty good that his professor is going to be like, oh yeah, all right, let me show you. There's a possibility the guy's going to be a dick and he's going to be like, ha, not my problem. Read the book, do your best. I'm out of here. You never know how the guy's actually going to react. But in order to move on, Nick needs to do the best he can do to figure all that stuff out. He needs to pull all the hairs out so that he's finally at that beautiful spot where he can move on to a four-year school, finish up his degree, and he can finally taste the incredible beauty of the artichoke heart. Oh my. That is a sweetness that you, you just, you just have to taste to understand. It's worth all of the work of peeling the damn thing and eating those little tiny bits of meat until you finally get to this part where it's nothing but meat and it's absolutely wonderful. So, that is how life is like an artichoke and an artichoke is like the Wizard of Oz. Um, so, that's my story. I'm sticking to it and I will talk to you guys later. Bye!